Focus 10 is about symmetry. Um, not all physical chemistry courses teach symmetry. They're sometimes embedded in inorganic chemistry, which is where it really does show its great power. But um, symmetry enables you to draw... It, well, symmetry is a rationalisation of common sense. It enables you to draw obvious conclusions, sometimes from complicated systems. So you, the starting point from the application of symmetry arguments to, to chemistry is simply the classification of molecules. Each molecule has its own characteristic symmetry. Water has got one sort of symmetry, methane another, whatever. So you can always classify a molecule by its symmetry. Some of these great big organic molecules just don't, don't have any symmetry at all, but they can all be, still be classified as having no symmetry. So they're still sort of captured in, in this um, uh, symmetry approach. And once you've identified the symmetry of your molecule, you can make immediately a number of, draw a number of conclusions straight away without any calculation. You can decide whether it's polar, for example, simply by knowing its symmetry. You can know whether it's chiral, simply from identifying its symmetry. So it's a very quick way of establishing the likely properties of a molecule. But also, it's the background for putting a molecule into a particular box and saying it has this symmetry. So anything I say about molecules of this symmetry applies to that molecule. That's a very, very powerful way of proceeding. And the following topic says, OK, you've got this intuitive idea of symmetry. How can you render it systematic, that is, mathematical? And now you introduce the, the concepts of so-called group theory. Because the symmetry operations of a molecule, the operations that leave it indistinguishable from where it was initially, um, turn out to form what is called a group in mathematics, which is a, a set of operations that obey a particular set of rules. And so you can use all the paraphernalia that the mathematicians have worked out for the exploration of symmetry by applying group theory to, um, um, uh, to, to the molecule. And this introduces the concepts of character tables, which are the core idea of um, most applications of symmetry in, um, in chemistry, which are very powerful little tables of information that enable you to classify orbitals as well as um, molecules in terms of their symmetry. It enables you to build up combinations of orbitals that have an appropriate symmetry, a symmetry that is appropriate for having non-zero overlap with um, one, another orbital that might reside in the molecule and so on. So group theory really provides you with um, very powerful tools for establishing all sorts of relations, including, as we show in the final topic of this particular sequence, the, um, uh, the, the construction of molecular orbitals. And having got molecular orbitals, the um, transitions uh, that can take place between the states of, of the system, all of which is symmetry related. So although often people skip group theory or leave it to others to follow, it really does um, give you insight into the properties of systems. And indeed, it also cuts down a lot of work because you can often see at a glance that an integral might be zero. So don't bother to calculate it. And it's that kind of very directness of group theory that gives it its power. But as I say, think of it as organised common sense. You could probably guess many of the results, but 
This really gives you a machine that you drop your problem in, turn the handle, and out comes the solution. And uh, we all welcome that sort of thoughtless approach when we're getting tired of things. So, uh, um, in the, so in this focus, what I've really introduced you to, the concept of symmetry. It's mathematization to give power into your hands, and then the application of that power to draw chemically significant conclusions.